Okay, uh, hello everyone. Uh, so let me explain the context. Uh, Lakshya and Minakshi are uh, front-end developers at OpenSense Labs. And uh, they were supposed to present. I'm not your speaker. <laughs> but uh, they couldn't get visa, and that's why they are uh, uh, presenting it remotely. So feel free to ask any question if you have. Uh, if they don't, like, if there is a noise issue or something, I'll just explain, translate for them. And uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, guys. So let's let's get started, okay? Uh, yeah. Over to uh, you. Hello. Yeah. Thanks for joining us today. We'll be talking about hardship faced by theming e-commerce site in Drupal 8. The session will revolve around the lessons we learned while theming a, uh, a Drupal commerce site for the first time. Let's begin with our introduction first. My name is Vinakshi Gupta. I'm Drupal developer at OpenSense Lab. I have been in the Drupal community from two years. You can find me on Twitter with username Vinakshi G489. Hello, I'm Lakshan. I'm front-end developer at OpenSense Labs. I've been in Drupal community from 1.5 years. You can find me on Twitter with username Lakshan1642. So, discussion of our today's session is first of all, we will go with the introduction of Drupal Commerce. Then, we will have a look how the e-commerce designs are approached, how we reach the designs for an e-commerce site. Then next we will cover where to start theming of an e-commerce site in Drupal 8 and the flow will go with product pages, theme of product pages, the hardships we generally face while theming a product page and next we would have checkout flows and there would be some final life conclusions which will resolve the hardship for the next developers, upcoming developers which are going to theme a Drupal commerce site. So yeah, I mean actually continue with it. Drupal Commerce. So what is Drupal Commerce? Drupal Commerce is a collection of modules adding functionalities like shipping, license management, tripping bills and more. It is used to build e-commerce website and application of all services. Some of the core features are dynamic product display, product type, attributes, order management and payment details. Now Lakshmi will uh, show you how we can reach an optimal design for Drupal Commerce website. So yeah, designing plays a vital role in any website. An e-commerce site has some key elements that play a vital role for better user experience. Let's take example of some vital key elements. Like the first element is trustworthiness. Trustworthiness. Creating a sense of trust, reliability, honesty among the shoppers coming to your website, coming to your e-commerce website is very much important for a shopper to stick to your website and buy a product from your website. Next, the vital element which comes in is Simplicity and ease of use. At no point should your shopper be left wondering what to do next. There should be proper checkout flow, there should be proper CTA button to take the user to the next page or the upcoming pages. And transparency also plays a vital role. Making sure that all, all links for like privacy policy links, uh, refund policy or product exchange policies are very easy to find. Like they are available in footer menu or somewhere else in your site. Coming back to the discussion. On the screen, you can see there is a pattern which general industry, generally the industry follow. Like in the header section, you can see there are three blocks. The first one, first block is for branding. This is for site search and the user main. Let's discuss it here. So branding is basically the site branding block we can generally say into the language. The next is site search. Site search is basically for global site search available in general, in general within the website. Next is the user menu block. User menu block generally contains the number of items in your cart, a cart block, or something like that. Next is site main navigation. The site main navigation takes the user to subcategory pages or category pages you can see like electronics, men, women, whatever it is. And now let's take the example of some famous e-commerce sites which are generally using the pattern. And just to add the hero slider part also, the hero slider is generally block which are used in header section which generally provides, which generally shows some sponsored products, some promoted products and something like that. We will discuss it later. Like Amazon.com, on the screen you can see this is the homepage of Amazon.com and the block layout is quite similar to the one we discussed earlier. And next is for Alibaba.com. Yeah, the pattern is globally across some of the most popular website. Uh, just to add, we are also working on a theme which will be available on Drupal.org very soon by the project uh, product, project name as e-commerce. And the structure we discussed will be same. And we are also thinking to create a distribution which will be using layout builder 
and with that with the couple of builder you could you would be easily able to place blocks wherever required like hero sliders or your similar products view or something some blocks in every anywhere required and this will be available on some of the major pages like home page category page and product page so now let's begin what is the next step once a design rolls in and where to start theming of a drupal commerce site once the design and back end is ready for theming the question arises in your mind is where to start according to us the preferred pattern for theming e-commerce site should go as follows well. picking generic component first like header footer as these are the these are consistent components across the site next we should go for the product pages as it would cover some of the reusable re feel like price feel which can be used in listing and blog pages uh, after that you can go with uh, checkout flows category pages and then all the basic pages before we begin theming product for our google commerce site it is important to understand the product structure in general a product can be enable in different variation let's take example of shaker suppose you have a product type called shaker and shaker is available in different colors and sizes the size and color will be attributed each shaker will be its own product with different variation of color and size as uh, we as we can see that the shaker is available in three different colors and two different sizes but we can have many variation for a product it might not be necessary that it is uh, it has every option of available as you can see that here we don't have a large shaker available in green color so let's translate it in google commerce dog we have a single product uh, called shaker uh, this product has five uh, different product variation uh, the the size product attribute has two different values and the color product attributes has three different values theming of product page for theming of product page uh, google commerce provides a default template called commerce product.html to it the theming of product page can be done on the basis of product type and theme book suggestion are also available to override to it based on requirement these can be uh, printed by take, by taking down or using it
uh, their hardships are faced while theming a product page. So yeah, next, the page which rolls in it is the cart page. So once a user uh, plans to buy a product from a website and reaches the cart page, the cart page in Drupal Commerce is generally formed by two views. There are basically two views which make the cart page. The first view is cart form view. By default, this view is in views table format. The display mode you here use is the table format. Okay. And the next view available is check, uh, checkout order summary. As we discussed in header section, we have three blocks and the last one was for user account menu. In the user account menu, all sites, generally all sites have a block which shows cart and the items contained in your cart, the number of items in your cart. This can be generally viewed using the checkout order summary and alterations can be made using checkout order summary view. Okay, now let's discuss further. So, so uh, like uh, these days, everyone requires different overrides as per the designs. So there are certain tweaks available by default and theme positions are also available by default, which you can pick up and simply theme. Like for empty card, we have commerce card empty field to test your tweak. For theming the card block on the header section, as I discussed earlier, commerce card block can be themed. And, and one more thing, uh, we need not fight with base uh, CSS which is coming through Drupal Commerce. You can simply undo some core style sheets uh, in your dot theme, dot info dot theme file of your theme. Okay, yeah. let's move further. This is a default cart view which is generally which generally comes with once you go with create installation of Drupal Commerce and in the theme I talked about your commerce we are working on here is a design which we are supposed to reach out. So what we did is we changed the display mode of view to unformatted type. So all fields were available separately. We just printed out the field in our big files and the hardship generally we faced here was uh, in the views, in the footer part of the view, the checkout order, uh, just the subtotal part on the right you can see is available separately. But what happens is when you go into Twig, it is also rendered in the row part. So if you are familiar with view.html or Twig, you might face a hardship there. It's not basically hardship. Uh, we just generally require to apply some CSS position like applying the absolute to the right for making the block to the right side. And yeah. The next part is checkout flow. The checkout flow needs to be very much user friendly because as per research, we have some or the percent and results why the user didn't purchase from a particular e-commerce site. These points should be kept in mind from the de designer point of view as well as a developer point of view. So let's listen to the statistics. A brief. 35 percent of user didn't purchase, didn't want to create an account. That's why they didn't purchase from an e-commerce site. So that is why guest checkout or guest uh, guest checkout are very much necessary and Google Commerce provides it by default. The next is 27 percent time of people thought that the checkout process was too long or too complicated. As earlier we started, uh, I discussed that there should be a feeling of trustworthiness that should be created while theming an e-commerce site. That's basically for designer's point of view. But yeah, from designer's point of view, uh, the checkout process was too long or complicated to understand. That's why the user left the site and didn't purchase. And 24% 24, 24 of people couldn't see or calculate the total order cost up front. That's why they quit the site. So these are some major statistics why a user generally quits the e-commerce site which should be kept in mind while designing or theming a checkout flow. So this this is the basic uh, block structure you can say we will require to theme for the checkout flow of our theme e-commerce. Uh, there are basically four pages. The checkout flow is divided into four pages. First page would go for login. That would have sign in, sign up or register you can say or guest user checkout. The second is order information. In the second page, we are going to take the inputs from user regarding the contact info, the payment info, and the payment method they are going to make. And next, we would have order review. All the information the user put it, the user used in the second page would be available on this review page. And the last page, of course, that is order completion page. It will show the successful order completion. Approaching the designs. Now, the point which rolls in is how to achieve the checkout flow as per the design. Drupal Commerce provides a customizable block structure through which the blocks can be rearranged to match the designs. And on the screen, you, are, you can see there's a screenshot from the Drupal Commerce site. This is a basic customizable block structure available in Drupal Commerce. Here, you can simply drag and drop the blocks as per your design requirements. 
and the best part is we have different tricks for complete checkout flow so moderation or changes can be very easily made for the required phase this is just about templates available yeah the first template which goes is for page hyphen and page checkout.html.way this is the generic template which is called throughout the checkout flow like in a in a normal to production we have page.html.way for the checkout flow like this is page checkout.html.way this is the basic uh, page which will be followed across the uh, which will follow all across your checkout flow next is for delivery like we discussed where we are going to take log uh, payment and contact information from the user we would have page checkout order information with for review we have page checkout review quick and for order completion we have page checkout completion quick yeah. moving further here is the checkout flow uh, which will be available in you commerce team too so this is the login page as we discussed uh, guest user seconds is also necessary to make a user buy from your website okay next page is for delivery how let's discuss the hardship we generally face while theming this site Uh, the best part is Drupal Commerce, the block structure. Uh, let me close that first slide. Uh, as you can see, approaching the designs, we have a sidebar option available, and in the sidebar we have order summary and open redemption. So by default, Drupal Commerce provides option for sidebar, and in sidebar we can simply place the required block, like we have placed coupon code. Let's discuss about this coupon code block. So basically, some Ajax calls are being made, which generally change the ID of the button. If you are applying CSS on the ID, be very particular about selecting the ID using the dynamic ID selector. Using dynamic ID selector is quite necessary because theming might break after a Ajax call because the ID won't be same after the Ajax call because some attributes are used which apply some code after the IDs, which generally breaks out the selectors. Next is the payment information or sorry, the review page. Uh, this generally shows the input which user made a page before we discussed and the last page is order completion page it is generally and it can it is generally quite similar page to the previous one we discussed and can be cleaned very easily okay here are the point which need to be kept in mind when regarding the checkout flow blocks can be rearranged from the available ui for block adjustment using dynamic id selectors while theming uh one more concern here is that sometimes the form which we showed which we showed regarding the payment information the fields need to be rearranged this can be easily done using the form alters yeah. so now let's discuss some final line of conclusions with action please take it uh, respect drupal standard follow the approaches suggested in drupal documentation and the documentation for drupal commerce use special filters let's say price filter in in, in documentation of drupal commerce they have shown that how you can use price for twin filters for for manipulating the price use attribute available in template like free templates use super behavior at once let's let's take example of uh, product page as in the theme we are working on uh, which has slider on product pages there are certain ajax calls having been made when variation are changed so the js code required for the slider to work properly needs to be wrapped inside the super behavior respect the framework if you are using framework like the bootstrap you try to get to the fullest if you are team drupal commerce style site for the first time you should learn how to theme up views as it is widely used in most of the e-commerce site instead of fighting with css provided by code you can simply remove the unnecessary style sheet by overwriting it by overwriting it in in, in info.yml don't write strong css Uh, using dynamic selector as it will unnecessarily uh, increase the size of your style sheet. Yeah. Now we would like to really thanks to the Commerce Guides and Drupal Association for giving us opportunity to present this remotely, and special thanks to Nicholas for him helping us throughout the flow. Yeah. Thank you, guys. If you have any questions, you can ask. Yes, please. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Hi guys, thank you for this nice presentation. Just uh, I have a question about the performance. So you mentioned that the uh, voice is quite low. Uh, no problem. I'll I'll repeat it.
Have you got any experience about the performance? Uh, I had a Drupal 7 commerce site, and uh, uh, when I uh, when I played all the attributes, uh, changing the attributes, uh, was a bit slow. Uh, and uh, I to rewrite the uh, jQuery and uh, something. So, have you got any experience about it? Laksh, can I answer this for you? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. So. <laughs> So uh, I'm not a themer, by the way. These guys do a pretty well job. But I have bit commerce. I mean, bit experience with uh, commerce seven and eight. Mm -hmm. So um, honestly, uh, Pran is not here, so I can say this. With Drupal seven, I really hated it. Okay, it was not the right choice, I would say. So uh, as you said, performance was really a big issue. Okay, uh, especially when you uh, your size grow. I mean, uh, your structure grows with say n number of variations. When you know when your uh, uh, product page is loading, your variations are loading, and then uh, they also had this uh, you know uh, hover slider where it zooms, etc., which they have removed eventually in D8. So uh, I believe the architecture was not so perfect, and I mean they also accepted with Drupal 7. If you try Drupal 8, uh, it is really in a Drupal way, and uh, uh, the commerce is really easy with it. So. Uh, in fact, uh, right now, multiple, I mean, uh, we really had issue when we were starting, the trust issue, I would say, okay, whether we should again go for uh, uh, Drupal 8 for commerce sites, but we are working with a couple of uh, 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 clients, and it's in terms of theming as well, as uh, they have explained to you, it has really good support, okay, you don't have to do a lot of overrides with jQuery, etc. Okay, it really in terms of, you know, you have uh, various tweak support, okay, in the back end, and performance-wise, also it works well. That that you can be sure about it. Thank you. Yeah. I did it for you. Thanks. Uh, any other question? Yeah. yeah. No. Okay. Perfect. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here. Okay, thanks Laksh, thanks Manakshi, bye bye. Thanks, bye.